So uh, we've got here, we've got Peter. How do you see your last name? Prima. Prima, yeah, Prima. Pe- okay, Peter yeah. Prima. Yeah. So you, you started a, an accounting firm, sort of merged it with another one. Um, and then, yeah, you started off uh, as part of this IT um, sort of organization with the lending side of things. And then you're like, all right, no, nah, I'm out on my own. And then you combined with a number of directors now, so you would better co. And they've specialized in small and medium-sized enterprises. Yep. I'm glad you're not along, so I'm going all right here. Yeah. And I uh, used to, funnily enough, work uh, deputy. You're the deputy head of finance at the um, Ministry board. of Justice yeah. in the UK. Yeah. Parole board. Parole board. Yeah. So that was real interesting, actually. Um, obviously, I was just in London to travel around and check out Europe, um, but that job was real cool. Um, it's quite funny because when you were working in the finance department for the parole board, you get prisoners calling you asking for like compensation and things like that because they weren't let out of jail in time because obviously there's a delay with hearings and stuff like that so it was quite funny like people call me on the phone i'm like who the hell is this and they'll be like oh i've been in prison at 12 years uh 12 years and i don't have a bank account to get paid into and this and that and i don't know i got got through to the wrong department mate like, <laughs> but you, you read some pretty crazy things over there like did you start making friends or i guess you couldn't because nah, it was a you distance couldn't. nah <laughs> you, you only talk to them on the phone but it's pretty crazy yeah. but i could like i could go through like the entire case management system for the for, the Eng- for England and Wales. Yeah, wow. So, like, there's parts of my job where I had to, like, do a quick little audits on, you know, who's who's where and this and that, and it's crazy, yeah, like, what people have done and read their whole file and... Oh, imagine yeah, there'd be some yarns up. there. Yeah, yeah. Now, well, that's actually one of the medium to long-term visions I have is um to start doing talks at prisons because I think a lot of people just want to want them to suffer instead of actually... um go for the net gain you know have them be part of society contribute in meaningful ways sometimes there's lost courses you've probably yeah. read a few of those files i've got a i've got a client that um gets prisoners out of like once they're once they're released um provides training and provides jobs oh, which so. is quite cool okay um yeah it's quite interesting yeah it would be i was thinking of getting you gotta, you gotta be you gotta have you, be, you gotta be you gotta have quick you know, get a thick skin to probably deal with it all, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's what's going to be interesting. I'm scared of people in general, let alone someone <laughs> that can beat the shit out of me. Yeah. But uh, I think it's always good as well, like, the people listening, um, to get a context of, like, the background and sort of how you came into what you're doing. We got a bit of a taste of it, but did you know you were going to be an accountant all along, or...? <laughs> no, shit, no. Yeah, or how uh, So, yeah, it's done school, played heaps of sports. Um, I was like, okay, I might get into something, like, sport-related, I don't know, physio or whatever it might be, and then finished finished school and i was like you know what? i'm gonna be a cop oh, yeah. and so i really want to be a cop and so i had mates that were cops and i was like yeah this looks like the thing to do like it looks heap, heap of fun yeah. and i get along with people quite well like i'm pretty certain i can talk my way out of a fight so i was like what does a cop do Same and so <laughs> and then um actually my mum was like oh why don't you just get a degree as a backup and i was like oh fuck like okay sweet um so i got my mate to enroll me she enrolled me into uni because i was like i don't know how to do it and then um she just my, picked a random one? No, nah, I was just like, oh, let's just do something generic like business. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I did accounting at school and economics and stuff, and it was, it was right. And then, um, <laughs> and then, yeah, first few years, I just like smashed it. And then the next two years, I spent drinking. And then um, had, you have to get work experience at AT to, um, to get your degree. Mm. And so, yeah, I got a nine-week work placement out in this um, small firm in Pukekohe. And um, oh, I just sat in front of a computer all day, and I was like, fuck, this is a dream. You get paid to just sit here and <laughs> this is banging something in, in the spreadsheet and off you go. Like, no, nah, it wasn't like that. It was actually quite cool. Um, oh, and I ended yeah. up getting my first job there, so I lived out there for just over a year. Oh, okay. Um, but I've got family out there, so it was all good. I could, I didn't have to travel between Auckland and Pukekohe every day. Yeah, jeez. Random. But <laughs> yeah, I know. I, this is a fall, one of those fall into it stories, yeah? Yeah, yeah go yeah. on, keep going. But, uh, yeah, so, and since then, like, a couple of my mates were accountants as well, and so we're always chatting and... Um, I ended up getting another job in, in the viaduct and um, the clients there were pretty much the 1% of New Zealand that have all the money. And so you, you get open you open your eyes up to a whole other world and mm. you're like, should if I actually like do something with myself, you, know, you can maybe try to get 10% of that. Like, you know, like you'll never be on that level, but it was it was cool and you could see how people like operated successful businesses and all did of you, that. Did and, you realize how human they were? Like I once upon a time, I pedestal oh, yeah. them and I was like, oh my God. This, yeah. this is capable for all of us. Yeah. It's got to be very confident in a certain area. Yeah. You'll just like walk in and someone will just come in, in, che- in like jeans and t-shirt and you'll be like, shit, that guy's worth heaps of money. And you're like, it's just a normal dude. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's quite cool. Like you learn how to be humble and you learn how to be, you know, appreciate and 
um, you know, if you have a good business and you don't, just, your ego doesn't take over and yeah. things like that. So that's the art. Yeah, it was cool, man. It was real good. All and right. so after that, my two mates started um, their accounting firm uh, and obviously wanted me to join, um, but I just fucked off to the UK. So <laughs> <laughs> am I allowed to swear? I don't even know. Yeah, no, free, uh, so, free, yeah. safe space, safe space. Yeah, so. yeah. So. I can't, I can't control if the lizards will judge you, but you're welcome. If yeah, no, it's all good. I saw heaps anyway. Um, but yeah, so I shot off to the UK, um, did that for two years, and then yeah, when I when I decided to come back, I was like, oh, I'm definitely gonna start out on my own because that's always what I always wanted to do. Mm. Um, you know, working for yourself, doing what you want, and that freedom. Yeah, okay. you know, freedom and the flexibility for me is massive. So no trepidation or fear. You're just like, well. Nah, just okay. went straight into it. Well, re- I had a rental property that I bought you know, back in the day and then refinanced that and gave it to my two mates. And that's how I bought into the firm. Oh, yeah, you yeah. trade a rental property for... Oh, no, I, I refinanced it because obviously the property prices went up oh, between 2015 and, used... and okay. 2017, yeah. So um, that's how I kind of got into it. And then after that, it was just getting new clients, networking, drinking, like... Yeah, just oh. seems to be a theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So work it's hard, good. play hard. Though. Yeah, so yeah. especially when you're starting out, like yeah. you've got zero clients and you've got a mortgage and you've got all these bills to pay. Um, but that's kind of where like you either sink or swim. Yeah. And so when there's that much pressure on you, I think that's where you know someone like me will like swim through it and get through it. Okay, so, you, so do you sort of need that pressure? Because like now are you following it through habit and discipline? Because that will fade, you know. You, you still have some pressure, but then you get comfortable, your debt's paid off, that sort of thing. Like, do you start to slowly... No, you just get more debt. And then oh, is that how you do <laughs> <laughs> You just keep upgrading the cars. No. Um, no, oh, like, between us, like, because our, our firm now has got five directors, so we're all pretty competitive and we're all pretty open about what we want to achieve and, like, personally and in business, um, which is cool. Um, and that helps us understand, you know, when we make decisions and why we do it. Um, but yeah, you just got to have that hunger and the drive. Yeah. Um, to do better. What happened when you first? So you 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 got the refinanced your rental property to get involved. Yeah. So you got this looming over your head, and now you got to get clients. What did you do? What was the uh, I joined B and I, this uh, little oh. networking group. Um, so I joined that, got heaps of little clients and stuff like that, and then yeah, just you just build your profile up and you attend networking things and is that all so network was just your main go-to just networking events did you have an idea of an ideal client or were you just like spray and hope no nah, when you're that like fresh you just anything <laughs> and everything man like, <laughs> big or small take it what are you doing now are you rethinking that and being more yeah a little or? bit a little bit a little bit like i still don't say no to small clients because you know a small client can turn into a medium big client you know yeah, yeah. but for me it's like it's more the helping aspect but those chunkiest clients and businesses are like for me more challenging yeah yeah and obviously we, we offer a whole range of services that can cater to growing businesses and so yeah like we specialize in growing businesses so you might have a turnover of 500k or 250k but if you want to get to a million like you're my ideal client mm. or if you want to if you got an idea and want to get to a million like let's do it you know for me that's a challenge yeah, yeah. and so when you're competitive and when you're like you like that kind of vibe um and you know like we look after 1500 businesses so you get an idea of what works and what doesn't and what industry 1500 did you say yeah all right so uh you get a pretty good idea um like we'll have plumbers that come across and say i want to i want to go out on my own i'm sick of my boss and you're like cool like we look after these all these guys who are successful this is what you need to do this is the software that you need this is how you structure your business this is when you need to hire someone mm. um etc cetera, etc cetera. And yeah. then like, oh, you keep going. And then so they'll be like, oh, cool. When do, and then when do I need to hire like an accountant or a bookkeeper and all that? And it's like, I kind of believe you can just outsource all of that to a certain point. So we do all of the like finance outsourcing. Mm. Um, so you know, instead of you having to hire a bookkeeper or an accountant or an office ad, whatever it is, um, you know, we can do the bookkeeping, man- management reports, end of your accounts, look after your taxes, pay your bills. You just authorize them. So like, it's kind of like that smartphone business model mm. and by that i mean like just like your phone you have an app for everything and for a business you can exact you can do exactly the same so you know you a guy be- called ben maris yeah yeah he just yeah. used the exact analogy yeah. so that, the I, used to, I used to be part of new zealand letters all oh, right he yeah, was yeah, in the yeah. podcast last week oh was he yeah, yeah he said he's, he's smartphone he's good man swim he's lanes good. yeah he's okay. good yeah. Yeah, yeah he's good yeah so yeah we were part of new zealand letters for about two years okay yeah so we just got too busy and couldn't attend but um 
yeah, good dude, eh? Yeah, you know, is that Sony... where you got the smartphone thing or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, um, yeah. yeah so we, I still catch up with all of those contacts. I know Beeman, yeah, real well. Okay. Yeah. So, Fuzzy. Yeah. Stan Henry? Yeah, I know Stan. Yeah, he was on the podcast. Oh, was he? Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Different one. He's a yeah. guy to find your Yeah, the attention there. seeker is quite good, eh? Like, I see, I see Stan probably like, yeah, once a week maybe if around so you nah, should have, did you hear his story of a covid like he he was a business coach and then and then all his business was gone and then he just played um what was it what's that video game where you you jump off in the haystack it's like the assassin assassin's creed oh yeah he played that for two weeks felt sorry for himself he's like all right fuck it let's do it and then he pivoted to marketing and oh, got wow. 21 star <laughs> Yeah, no, that's insane. Eh? Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, no, I understand real well. Do you have? Cool. Do you? Does it? Do you know Drew? Knowles? Drew Knowles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Influence yeah, ecology. Those, yeah, 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 yeah. It goes well. All those guys. He's spoken at an event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez, mate, this Auckland's not small bad. world. Eh? Yeah, you got to be on best behavior all the time. <laughs> so, did you find like yourself starting to get more into tradies or a particular genre you appeal to, or is just anyone and everyone? Um, oh, I think type of clients i have uh oh no they're, they're all over the park but yeah, okay. the big ones are usually hospitality retail health and beauty hmm. yeah have you worked out why no nah. oh probably because i'm like the guy that looks like he's just come from the gym in the office <laughs> <laughs> no like okay, like yeah, yeah, no, like, health, yeah, health like, like, like yeah like yeah. gyms salons um barbers then you got like retail clients um and i, I hate wearing suits so i'm always like you know, I, want, I just want to wear whatever I want. And so mm. retail really appeals. Um, and yeah, hospo is another good one. So Yeah, right, buzzy. So like you got 1,500 clients. How many accountants do you have or people that can do book with? Uh, I think we've got 12. 12? Yeah. That's still quite a, yeah. quite a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, so you have... And we system. outsource as well. Ah, okay. Yeah. So what do you normally do for your outsourcing? Uh, so all just like the compliance stuff, we outsource and then... We hire like typically mainly senior accountants who okay. can review all the work. Um, Big picture. Yeah, and so do more of that advisory piece. Yeah, yeah. So trying to like get away from accounting, do more advisory. Do you have like systems that you use, like yeah. where you built them, or? Yep, yep. So our outsource team, um, they're all like to the book. Our process, this is how you do things, um, which worked really well. We've been using them for quite a few years. Yeah, it makes. I mean, fifteen hundred. Like that's the challenge I face in our business. Is like okay. So I could go more high net worth individuals that invest more and then I can give more personalized service because we like we deliver hand deliver Christmas cakes to 250 clients. Yep. And then you have client functions and you got to do annual reviews. And so it, it becomes a, you got to weigh it up. Yep. Yep. Have you had to make a call? Like, how do you navigate the unscalable? Like, can you, like you had the bottom line processes that are consistent automated outsource. Do you do you find you're close to peak, or do you, how do you navigate that growth? Uh, I guess we're still growing at the moment. So, like for us, we're a growing business, and we've got five people that are thinking about the business twenty four seven, and so we all like chip in, and it all kind of just works. Hmm. Um, we have like strategy days once a uh, once a quarter um, where we talk about the business, where we want it to go, um, things that have worked well. Um, so I think for for our size business, we probably work on it. I don't know. You'd, I could probably say every day. Every day there's something new that we're just like, oh, that would probably be better. Or have we thought about this? Or can mm. we do this differently? Um, and that's the thing. Like some people get stuck in the routine of just actually working. Yeah. And not yeah. working on the business. Yeah, no, and so um, ours is always evolving. Um, always trying to be better. Um, and I think that's, what really drives our success that's fair i mean it's like you're saying at the start i mean most businesses either fail two reasons one that ego so they start buying things they can't afford to impress people they don't like and then the second piece is they're in the business there's a good book emith it talks about that it's about sis you don't have a job or you don't have a business you have a job and yeah. you want to systemize away as much as you can yeah that's a challenge eh? how what do you recommend for four small businesses that are trying to get to that scale but keep finding themselves in the business it's like I, I I always take it back to sports and mm. like if you're you know not at the level that you need to be you get a coach and like same for any business if you want to get somewhere you got to get a coach um, or like just an advisor someone yeah. that can that or even a mentor you know you could get free mentors out there all yeah. sorts um, but the importance for us is you know if we know what your goals are then I know how to get you there 
or at least I know someone that can help you get you there. And so those are the things that like, like the moment, for example, I've just started playing golf um, and I got a golf lesson on Friday and literally I was like, shit, there's so much I don't know. Mm. And it's the same with business. Like you don't know what you don't know when you're starting out. Yeah, no, fair. Like little things like, you know, how to automate invoicing and send out automatic reminders so you get paid on time so you don't have cash flow issues. Things like that. <laughs> just like, you're going to learn either the easy way by someone telling you or you're going to learn the hard way when you struggle and have no money in the bank account. No, that's fair. So, Who would you go to first as a point of call for a small business trying to get mentoring? Is it, do you do a self-order of where your, your skill set's lacking, what you don't enjoy? Or do you look at certain pockets that are common failures, you know, accounting or recruitment or marketing or... Yeah, depending on the size of the business, like I find with startups, they're all worried about taxes and this and that. And I'm like, mate, you don't even make any money. Like, why worry about taxes? Let us sort that out for you. Hmm. And then it's like, you should just focus on sales and marketing, getting money in the door, getting new clients on board, like those sorts of things. And just, so we like, obviously like we're accountants, but we're more advisors and coaches in our business. And so, yeah, we we provide that sort of guidance on how to do things and when to do things and the timing of when to do things. Hmm. Um, So... You know, any business that comes on board like that, we're just like, you need a business plan and a budget and a forecast before I even want to take you on. Mm. For me, that just shows that you want to invest in the business to know that cl- so you can get clarity and, and direction and confidence on where you want to be. And so if I know that a business owner is willing to do those two things, I know that like they're ambitious and they're curious to, to do better. And so that's like our ideal client. You know, that that's interesting. So it's not necessarily a monetary qualifier. I mean... It's more the fact that they're willing and able to do what needs to be done. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, interesting, eh? Yeah. Because if someone goes, oh, no, that's too expensive, or no, nah, I don't need a business plan, I've got it in my head, <laughs> I can tell you right now, it's not going to work. They're the next savant, man. Yeah, but then how, how else am I meant to help you? Like, if I know what you want, let's just say your one-year goal was, like, it doesn't have to be money. It could be, I want to spend more time with my family. I want to play golf once a week. Mm. In my head, I could, who knows where I'll be, and I'll be like, oh, shit, like, this idea could really work if you, you know, hired an extra person and you just did the invoicing at the end of the week or on a Thursday and then that's your Friday free. Yeah. But like little things like that, like an accountant's not going to tell you that. No. <laughs> so like yeah. a big thing for us is that, you know, we always had this saying like we treat your business like our own. And um, yeah, for all of our businesses, like there'll be times where I just wake up from a dream and be like, oh, shit, that's a really good idea for this client. Like it's weird. Like I'm constantly thinking about it or like, how to do better. It's so weird. Mm. I, I don't know. For me, it's just the more value I can provide, then that's gold. Do you Doesn't, know why, not, why that motivates you? Or? I think it's hard. For me, it's like a challenge and it's fun. Okay. Like, I don't wake up and be like, fuck, I've got to go to work today. It's like, yeah, so. I'm going to help some people. I'm going to go make some people happy, uh, sort some issues out, solve some problems. And then I come home and I'm like, I feel like I've achieved something today. Yeah. You know? But yeah. that's every single day. Yeah, no, it's mad. It's crazy, yeah. Do you ever think like, for, like I, I wanted to be um a, like a kayak guy that also uh, understood um, paramedics. So it's like going to be a traveling guy. And I was like, oh yeah, sport and all this stuff. Yeah. And then and then I was like, never will I ever work in a fucking office. Like <laughs> stuff. That, and then I started doing it and I was like, well, now I have coffees and for a living and solve problems. You yeah. Know? And like yeah. you see the person's elation and like how they're feeling about life. and. Yeah. Did you ever think you'd just be sit- sitting and talking shit for a living? Like, that's oh, mate, like, talking shit is like my forte. You ask any <laughs> of my mates, anyone that knows me, I'm yeah. the guy that talks shit. Yeah, yeah. But that's the fun part. Like, uh, for me, I like to get on with people on like a personal level, on a vibe, or like over a beer, um, coffee, whatever it is. And then at least I know that you're a good person. And it's like, I love working with good people. Mm. And so um, for me, that's like a big thing. Like, you don't, the last thing you want to have is like 10 clients breathing down your neck going, my fee's too high. Yeah. But like if you're providing value constantly, like money doesn't, it's not an issue because no, you're, right. you're solving a problem. And so we break it down into three things and it's like the three freedoms. So like time freedom, mind freedom and um, financial freedom. Hmm. And so you could talk to like the biggest business that we look after. He doesn't care about numbers. It's it's about uh, less stress. How do you take, oh, I just want less stress. I've got a big business. Like what can you do to solve this problem? And that's when you do like an organization review and you like restructures and things like that. So it just makes it better to for them to solve one of those three freedoms. Yeah, no. It's <laughs> interesting, eh? It's true. I mean, like there's the quote, um, cost is only an issue in the absence of value. It's so true. Do you have like, um, so you have a consultation. Do they, 
do they come in is it free initially and then you oh, do yeah. A, yeah yeah and then so what do you do do you go through like a goals based analysis and then you look at the process and the money or like how do you is that to get a new client on yeah or... new client comes oh, in what nah. do you do so yeah usually it's just like they'll come in or they'll get it we'll get an inquiry whatever it might be it might be a referral um and you just we just have a chat like just whatever have a coffee lunch and just just catch up and tell me everything and so you know you hear about the business but more importantly it's like they'll tell me they've got this great business rah, rah, and i'll be like okay well, what about your personal life like how's that and then it's like then you get into deeper issues and then you're like okay yeah, cool okay. so there's things in your personal life that you want to achieve that the business isn't delivering like you don't want you don't want to work for the business you want the business to work for you so our business works for us or for me and so I'd want to create a business that allows me to take a take a, a drawing or a wage or whatever it might be so I can buy the house that me and my family want to grow in or grow into. So things like that that you'd never understand like if you just had a quick meeting go, cool, we'll do your annual accounts and tax returns. Mm. Is that the, like, okay, so we've got this cool thing coming out where um, well, it's out at the moment, uh, free accounting. Free accounting. Free accounting. Okay. So it's free and end of year annual uh, financial statements and tax returns free <laughs> yeah, yeah. and um shit that's a good system you got in the back if you do yeah that. no so so the 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 purpose of it is that if you're a business and we believe that you should have like information at your fingertips every month to make decisions and so if you're on like a regular reporting package like monthly reporting um we're managing your tax every month um you know we look after your gst and bookkeeping all that sort of stuff um why would I charge you for something that's of no value for last year? You already know your numbers if you're a good business owner. Mm. Or if you're willing to learn, you already know. So like we've found that like, you know, we used to send out information requests and it take forever to get info in. And we just asked our clients, like, why does it take you so long? And they're like, You just have to do it because the IRD says. But mm. if you're doing if you're proactively managing your business, you know, monthly meetings with the accountant or advisor, you got the numbers there, um, in the management report. You know what your tax is going to be. You know all of this stuff. <laughs> so mm. like, so this is like a way of rewarding uh, the ambitious business owners and going, here's something for free because you don't value it, but the real value is here. Yeah. Uh, so then you're once again attracting what your pre-qualifier is as well. Yeah. Um, I'd be curious, what would be like the different sort of price points that you would charge like for different options? You know, like how would they do it? Like, is there a cost to do the plan, or as you say, you got the free reporting side, or is it an ongoing subscription? Yeah, so subscription? we just we just do I'll just change um, the camera while you do I'll that. Go for it. Um, so we will. Um, I will do a proposal, um, and what we do guide them the the, the prospects on is that okay. So initially, bef- like if you're going to do this reporting package with free accounting, you need to do a business plan and forecast, like non-negotiable okay okay and so that sets the tone that sets the tone for the next 12 months and then our management reports we've got the numbers and because i've got the what the budget is and i know what the business plan says you link them two together and then our advisory meetings don't become just about the numbers or where you're heading you actually link it and go cool so what are you gonna do next month to try and reach that one year goal Hmm. and like i don't know if accountants still do it these days but that's kind of like that sets us apart from every other business yeah well i was talking to a like because that's a common problem like trying to trying to get the business owner engaged and then where things are out of your control in terms of your ability to execute because they're not delivering the information so i was starting to see a trend where accountants will try and solve that issue in a different way one guy he did it by making it simplistic so making it so easy and engaging that they all want to do it whereas you're doing it from a like hey if you do these steps and earn the right then you'll get it for free. Yeah. And then from there, you can have a different dialogue around advice. Yeah. So then what becomes the price model do you charge for the ongoing it's still, advice? No, it's, still, it's still monthly. Um, okay. So it's just a monthly fee, depending on how big the business is and what's required, okay. um, what sort of management accounts we need to prepare. Um, anywhere from, I don't know. Yeah, it just depends on what the business is and what they need. Okay. So, very nice. What's your is, dream then? Hey. Talking about everyone else's business, what's, your, what's the goal? What's the long-term dream for you? Keep it um, personal. Separate from the business. Mate, what do I want? To, I want to get a boat. Eh? Um, okay. I go fishing heaps, so I'd love a boat. Um, but before that, I'd obviously need to sort where we live. And I always wanted to build a house. Um, so at the moment, we just we live in Hillsborough. Um, it's pretty sweet. It, well, I, so that's a story in itself. We managed to buy a house on the first day of lockdown. <laughs> so that Wednesday, when we we're going into lockdown, um, had a couple of auctions that day, and 
you know, we'd been struggling to find a house for like six months and the wife was getting cranky. And um, there was this one property that got bought forward from the Sunday to the Wednesday at 10 a.m. And I was like, no, nah, there's no way we're going to win this house. Like, we're just going to get out. But like, it's so nice. Uh-huh. And um, my wife was like, no, nah, just email the bank and let's just go to the auction. And I was like, no, nah, I can't be fucked. And um, <laughs> so I ended up, yeah, I had, we ended up going. And I was like, I'll just go and like, I'm just going to go in a beanie and baggy t-shirt. We're not, we're not, we're just, I'll just go watch. And um, <laughs> I walk into Ray White in St. Helier's and the, the real estate agent's like, oh, I'm so glad you guys came. And I'm like, why? She's like, oh, you're the only registered bidders today. <laughs> and we fucking yeah. won the house. Yeah. Paid 50 grand over CV. Like, oh, but yeah, lots changed since then. Yeah, you. I know, mate. So it's insane. Like, just, oh, yeah. So, yeah, we're pretty happy with our house at the moment, but always, I wanted to build. I've always wanted to build a house. So, um, okay. That's one of my dreams, um, personal dreams. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, getting into property as well. So, property development and things like that. Um, that's just, yeah, it'll, it'll happen in, in, in good time. Why property? Like, what's the appeal? Uh, I've always just liked property. Okay. Like, I don't know. It's just you're solving a problem, right? So, yeah, using you know land and stuff like that to create more job, more well, but you're creating jobs and you're creating more housing supply. Yeah, okay. And so, for me, it's like you look at people that are well off and like at some point I'm gonna be like I can't just keep working as an accountant my whole life. Like, at what point do I just go? I'm just gonna get into property now, and um, that's gonna earn me enough income to just have a chilled life, or you know. At least be financially free. Yeah. So it's one of those um, three things: is it free, yeah, free freedoms, yeah, there, mate. Yeah. Time and freedom. Like, yeah. To be honest, like I, like, I'm not gonna lie, I'm living the dream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go you, mate. Yeah. Go you. So, so was there points where it was a bit of a nightmare? What's that? Was there was a points where it wasn't necessarily smooth sailing as well. Oh no, it's never smooth sailing, and you can never just be like I say that now. But there's times where I'm like, shit, I wish I could have some more money. But like, those are just that's just life, you know. Yeah. Um, you kind of just got to live with not being greedy and not just being focused on money. You got to think about. Fa- I want to start a family soon, so that's what, probably one of my biggest goals. Mm. Um, start a family soon and get it, get that whole part of my life sorted. Um, so yeah, like because it just feels like good to be working, good, happy with what I'm doing. Personal life is good. Yeah. You know, all of that sort of stuff. I need to keep that real good balance. Otherwise, if I start feeling like shit or stressed out at home, mate, that's just going to directly affect my work. Yeah, yeah, no. So it's good. Like my wife supports me, and it's awesome. So, um, ah, it's a really big part of, you know, keeping me motivated to keep going hard. Yeah, no. Well, how do you do? Do you still put in the hours? Like, what? How many hours do you reckon you would have done? How do you, like finding that balance, or you just automated everything and just like ten hours a week doing podcasts once you want? <laughs> I actually got asked this question, and um, fuck. To be honest, I couldn't even tell you how many hours I do. Okay. Yeah. Just because, like, I'm in and out of the office talking to people. And mm. for me, like, like I said before, it doesn't feel like work. Yeah, yeah, no point. I could be in the office for 10 hours. I could be in the house for 40 hours. And I'll still feel the same. Mm. Like, for me, I'm just helping. Like, for me, I'm just giving value. I'm just solving a problem. And so, that's not work. Yeah, no. So it's more so it's more a reflection of having time to be able to do st- Like, the flexibility to be able to do things. You're not necessarily working more or less than other people you just you just are able to make time for the wife yeah make time for hockey golf that yeah. sort of thing yeah and that's exactly what like we preach to our clients like the three freedoms so like i gotta practice what i preach and i gotta stay true to my own word mm. i'm not gonna tell you to be the best business owner when i've got like taxes coming in my ass you know what i mean like yeah, no, you have to you have to have that like like credibility to just be like this is how i do it yeah and so that's what i tell people i just how, how do i do it difference between wisdom and knowledge really yeah so was so when you first when you first came here and kicked off because there's, there's going to be people in counting and they don't have the they don't have the love for like other industries so like this would be a rare opportunity where they get insight into your practice and how yep. things work like what were the sort of th- lessons you learned along the way that you think you wish you had learned from the younger younger point of view um understanding the value that you give to a client ah uh, so price you weren't charging so price? so so obviously like I. Like, I kind of take charge on, like, the sales part of our business. Okay. And, like, if you can sell accounting, you can sell ice or Eskimo. <laughs> you put me in any business and go sell it, I will sell it. Oh, yeah. And so, like, <laughs> it is like, who can sell accounting, right? Um, but the way that I've learned is that, like, selling is, if you want to sell, don't talk, listen. Mm. And so, like, 
I'll go out and it'll be like, I want to go meet the accountant or talk to a new accountant. I don't say anything. <laughs> like, I literally just go, you tell me everything about you and tell me about your business. Tell me your personal. I just ask questions. And then, like, all of this information comes in. Then I'm like, okay, how can I actually help this guy? Or how can I help this business? And so um, that's a big part of what we do, which I guess a lesson that I would wish I learned was stop trying to force a sale. Mm. You know, it's not it's not always about just getting the sale, getting the client. It's about can I actually help you? And there is people where you're like especially during COVID, it's like we helped as many people as we could. But there was some people where I was like, I can't help you, but I can help you like you need to talk to this person or you probably need counselling or like deeper issues that I'll never be able to solve. Yeah. And so yeah, I mean I just wish that back, if I started and I just knew that I could, I just had to be me and just be genuine and just what's best for the customer or what's best for them because they wouldn't know what they need, right? Yeah. That would be one of my biggest lessons because once you start portraying value, you don't need to worry about how much you charge. <laughs> nah, it's, it's true. And like, in, in accounting firm, it's hard to like grow into a decent size. Yeah, so, why do you think that is? Um... I think like accountants these days, I don't, I actually don't know, but I think that they probably want to keep doing the work themselves. Whereas like we outsource, we've got senior accountants, they review it, sits on my desk and I just go have a meeting with the client and we talk about it. And we talk like, in a normal, in a normal like year, you'd like do the annual accounts or you have the meeting with the client. You don't even talk about the numbers, you just talk about what you're going to do. <laughs> and we so, I think you've got to be forward thinking like there's entire practices in New Zealand that are built on doing end of year financial accounts and we're yeah. doing it for free. Yeah. Like I'm literally turning your business model on the head. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So like we're like really, really forward thinking. Like if you said to me, oh, you know, how did I do in the last couple of months? I'll be like, I know last month, but the two other months I've got no idea. Because mm. I'm already thinking of like you got Christmas coming up and you got Mother's Day coming up and there's all these sales that you can have and like, you know, I'm always like looking for that next opportunity. Yeah. And so business owners that have that mindset of like, when's the next opportunity? I think that's really good as well. Yeah. So it opens your like self up to seeing things, different things. And like one little opportunity could end up being, you know, huge success. Yeah. I mean, I think as well as being in front of the coal face and having a job, a lot of um, business owners look very short term and short term gain. And sure, like these sort of models, like your viewpoint, I have the same sort of viewpoint in marketing. Like it's a medium to long-term game. There's going to be wins immediately, but it, it's sort of sacrificing today to a degree for later. Because if you, even if you don't get a sale and you get a relationship and a credibility, they might know 10 different people that could become clients. 100%. That's why I never say no to a meeting. And mm. I never say no to a small client or like I don't have a definition of a small client. That's impressive systems. Like, you could be a contractor and your dad yeah. could be a millionaire. Like, how the hell am I going to know? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, you're right. You know, is it, so that's what I mean by like, be forward thinking and always like, know that there's an opportunity around the corner. Or you could lose a client, but three more come in the door the next day. Like, <laughs> Nah. Uh, it's, it's on, I mean, that's the whole um, framework behind creating this podcast. Is like, okay, if I add value to accountants and this becomes the go-to place and I have connections with yourself and then, and then it becomes workshops and I'm just around and then they start feeling confident that I can deliver on what the client needs and then it's just another value add. Yeah. And this might this might take years, you know? I, yeah. I don't mind. It definitely does. It definitely does. Yeah. But then it just like, it's like a snowball effect. Like in your first year, you're busy. Like 10 people might refer your work. The next year, 25 people will refer yeah, your work. And the nice. next year, your entire business is just based on referrals. Yeah. It, well, that's that, there's a point of difference. Like, so there's one, there's the brand and what you're putting out there, and then there's operationally delivering on it. And I think going by what you're saying, there's something you do well with the back end systemization. Was there like, was there a pain point you recognized early that you guys needed to streamline or? Uh, yep, and we're still working on that. Okay. Um, so we about two years ago we hired um, someone as like an office manager just to do like admin stuff, um, and we figured out that she was real good with systems. So excel monday.com um like working with you know some accounting software and then like we kind of figured out more that she was like a fucking guru and so oh, yeah? yeah and so we just made her our operations ma manager and so she looks after the entire operations everything from 
workflow, job scheduling, getting info in from clients, onboarding, deboarding, everything in between. <laughs> no accounting point. experience. Yeah. But that's the cool part because you don't need it. No, I agree. And so like you just got to figure out who the, the superstars are that have those special skills. Mm. And it could be soft skills, could be technical skills, whatever they are. But if you bring out the best in people, they just crank. Yeah. And your business cranks. How do you navigate the dent- different mental mind maps? Because I find one of the most effective ways to grow and to develop is really to surround yourself with people that are passionate about what you're not and think in a different way. Do you, Is it the overarching vision? Do you hire on vision and values and then you incorporate them into your, your dreams? Or how do you how do you navigate the, hey, I think completely different from you. I'm very system and you're more people. How do you get through that conversation? I guess with like new stuff, you got to go through and have interviews with like five different directors. Not in, like it's not individual, like you know. But we got directors who are commercially mi- like minded, who only think about you know how the business how to, how the business runs better, and they and they bring that into our directors meetings, and it's it's a real cool kind of you got one person that's got ideas to like land on the moon, and you got someone here who's like, oh, no, you're not allowed to do that because you can't, and then you got like us in the middle who were like, actually you can, but we should have a think about it. Yeah. But if you put all five people in a room with like small and big ideas, crazy to stupid to normal, mm. <laughs> it just somehow works. Yeah. Well, and because we like, we've got a, we know what our vision is and we know what our purpose is. And, um, you know, two years ago, that free accounting idea, we, we literally laughed at the guy. Like, Nuran, our director, was like, we should do free accounting and we should do it like this. And we were like, that's never going to work. <laughs> And now, like two years later, we've actually developed a product and now we're like going out and selling it and like providing more value to our clients. Yeah. So like no idea is silly in our business because it might just happen. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so same with employees. Like we encourage our employees to um, go out to clients and upsell and like provide more value. And so we're giving them free reign to do whatever they want. Mm. And that's also training them to be a, a business owner one day. Like, you know, if they want to buy into the practice, just let us know. You could be the youngest person in the team and want to buy in and we'll be like, cool, if you're ready, you're ready. So there's no like hierarchy or there's no glass roof. There's no limit on what you can achieve in our mm. business. That's smart because one, one, you're attracting people that will get opportunities they might not have expected because, I mean, I found, so I had a manager, a team of 15, commission only selling. So you'd think, ah, oh, a guy with sales background's good, guy or girl, but the it's really they have to come in with an empty cup, and it's more of a actual, I guess, competency, values, and vision, and yep. how they interact with people that matters more. Yeah. So then you bring in this office manager, she has this expectation, and then you start seeing that she's doing a great job, she gets rewarded for it, more opportunity, and then you create this hierarchy in the sense where everyone has the opportunity based on their idea, not necessarily their title. Yeah. Yeah. How do you how do you um risk mitigation? What about that? How do you navigate like these people freedom? Also, sometimes, ugh, what did you just do? Oh, I guess that's just part of the job. Um, everyone makes mistakes, but it's just one of those things where we just trust them, and they've been hired for a reason because okay. they can either grow into that position. They've got special skills, or they're high performers, or um. You know, there's just something they might have really good communication skills, but they not be might not be strong technically. Like, there's all these sorts of things. You can't get the perfect person. Yeah, no. We're not perfect ourselves. No. Like, I want to be a cop instead of an accountant. Like, <laughs> yeah, no one's yeah. perfect. But, yeah. like, that's what makes a great business a great business because there's all these different people with different skill sets. But then if you can identify those, someone with, like, no communication skills can, like, sit next to someone with real good communication skills. Mm. Or someone technical can sit next to someone that's not so technical. And then just, it's just all about gelling. It's like a sports team. Like any sports team, like the All Blacks, they gel. The Warriors, probably not. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but like, if your business and your employees and your directors and everyone in the business can gel, then you've got a humming business. That's that's an impressive thing to create. Do you, what, like, what's the hiring process with that? Like, how do you, is there something you replicate each time? Like, we had a recruitment guy talking about what you talk about with the bear you have two interviews just because someone does good at a job interview that should be a red flag because they've done so many and then you take them to the bear and then then you just sort of see how they really are as a person like yep. what do you yep so at the moment we're doing you know beer or coffee catch-ups um do a loom video so obviously with like with covid and all that our 
you know, we went really hard with IT. We were pretty good. And then we started doing things like, you know, we'll go through a set of annual accounts or management report and we'll just attach like a Loom video to it. And so... A Loom video. So it's just like a little video that pops up and you like, I can talk and they can see me, but I can just go through what I want to go through as if I was in person. Oh, okay, got it. And so we do that for proposals because um, sometimes you can't quite write what you're trying to like portray. Yeah. And so we just said to anyone that wants to hire, you know, first attach a five minute Loom video, tell us about, tell us about you, anything. Yeah. And so you get people that will read their CV and video and oh. you get people that just chat and just have a normal conversation. Yeah. And so then you know straight away, like two different types of people, who do you want? Do you watch it on two times speed or something? Because sometimes, sometimes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool though. It's real. Like I didn't, I didn't have any of that when I was, when I was hire, going for a job interview. Like the yeah. manager would be like, "Where do you see yourself in five years?" And I'm like, sitting in your seat. And so like, <laughs> and so like that was like my response. But if I had to do a Loom video now, I think it's quite cool to see, like, not so much your accounting background or what you know accounting wise, because that can be taught. Mm. It's more about how you interact. Mm. And like, that's the cool part. And that's you need people like that who. Because you got to go sit, like introduce them to your clients and things like that, and so you place quite a lot of trust on them um, to do that and do a good job. Um, but if you know if they can't talk to a client or you know they're just awkward, it's pretty hard. Yeah, no. If, well, is it? Do you apply the same principles for someone that's not necessarily client facing, or is it just you're just going hard on the accountant hiring and client facing role? We're trying to go more down the advisory route. Okay. And so you do need to kind of be that client facing role Got it. and I mean for us our dream would be for our accountants to just carry on and keep progressing with their own careers and one day take over us that's, that's the dream yeah. and so yeah like we're trying to push them to do as much of it they, as they can um, you know our business is called Betterco Advisory and Accounting now instead of Accounting and Advisory because we place more emphasis on advisory than accounting I mean it's still important it's mm. still bread and butter but it's the advisory piece now. And so we want to take the lead on that in the industry to try and make sure that we're the advisory lead accounting firm. It's smart. I mean, you can you can capture the market. I, I, I sort of had the viewpoint like I'd rather co- um, compete with a great white in the desert than in the ocean. So I look at all my competitors, what middle-aged white men don't know much about tech. Yeah. So I was like, okay, they're not really doing content or they're just trying to sell. So if I create content at scale yeah. and then the point of difference becomes the information that we can b- produce free yep. and be known yep. and then have financial planners build within that and give them that autonomy to create their own personal brands and and then there's the opportunity but the, yeah that's 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 going to be an art it's, it's a new thing so yep. we'll yep. see how we go on that no but that's cool because it just gives people an insight into what you do um and i know i've got a lot of retail clients that can put their content of how they created a product onto the instagram and things like that but like you don't know what goes through the mind of an accounting firm or a director in an accounting firm and why their accounting firm is like that. Yeah. That's why I think content creation is real cool. Yeah. No one talks about it. No. Like you're just an accountant. You're just a bean, a bean counter. Like, <laughs> fuck. Like, you know? There's yeah. like all these things. So like, I mean, if you look at all of our personal Instagrams, you'll just be like, these guys aren't accountants. Yeah. <laughs> I like, that. And that's kind of like, that kind of shapes what your business is like as well. Yeah. Um, you're obviously good at, going to be good at what you do, but how you go about it, the type of clients you attract, things like that. Did you have to build like, so when I was younger, I, I'd have to be with these a lot older salespeople and I had to build credibility in terms of knowledge Yeah. because of baby fat. And then they start thinking you're older. Did you yeah. start on that? But uh, like, how do you, how do you mitigate against the, like, so obviously you're just wearing what you want to wear. Do you have, um, did you have to build up more competency or it made you more relatable or it's just a oh, non-issue? When or? I first started, I was like, nice shirt, tie, like I liked wearing suits. I think I've gone the opposite. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like shorts and chucks and t-shirt and hat. Yeah. But that that that's what the credibility is, and I've just realised. Okay. Like over the last, oh, it must be in the last two years, where I've just like gone worse and worse in what I wear to work. <laughs> but then like the type of client I attract is like bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. And so you get to a level where you're like, it's not about what I wear. It's not about how I look. It's what I know and what I can provide. Yeah, fair. And value. And it's more. It sounds like you had an authenticity battle initially, where yeah. one you didn't feel like you the advice you're giving was necessarily valuable, and then the other thing is, yeah, you 
but that's you're what, trying to be something you're not. Yeah, and that just comes with experience, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Like you kind of find who, when you go through business and start from scratch, you find out who you are <laughs> and what works for you. Yeah. And I guess that's the type of client I attract as well. Okay. Which is like, you know, easy going and yeah, just like not chilled, but it's just, it's a good vibe. Yeah, driven, easy going and personal. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. All right, well, as we wrap this up, mate, that was you, Duval. Uh, what would be, like, how would people find you, like, if they're looking to send out their Loom video? Zoom, what would you call it? Loom video. Loom yeah, video? Yeah, Loom video. So, or um, there's a business owner listening that wants to get into this free product you're talking about. Yeah, so um, the website's always a good start, um, betterco.nz, mm-hmm. um, and all the details are on there. Otherwise, so? just, yeah, get in touch, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it might be. Everywhere. I'm always taking a phone call just like you <laughs> call up hey you want to do a podcast yeah sure why not <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah i just like having a yarn eh? um about whatever it might be um you know if people want to got an idea if they want to start a business if they got an existing business and want to know how to do things better um that's one of our like key points that we really provide value in um mm. a perfect example is we've got a we've got a um a staff member who is into gaming and like he's the man on the keyboard he knows all these apps and this and that but that's the perfect person you want for like your app advisory kind of person mm. in the business because they can they just get it they just get software they get all these different systems and so yeah that sort of stuff is you know real cool um, yeah, yeah. and they they can just go okay cool this business is a i don't know a builder and okay from all of my clients i know that these systems are the ones that these other businesses use so let's get them in do like some implementation let's do some training and it's real cool like mm. you know there's just a point of difference where you know we always say don't let perfect get in the way better <laughs> so i've probably said better like a million times on this podcast <laughs> but yeah like this that's what it's about you know we're not you don't have to strive and be perfect yeah, you can yeah. just strive to do better and you know that's what that's what we do I mean, one, you're not going to be happy because you can't achieve perfection. And two, paralysis by analysis, you're not going to start. Yeah. So better, yeah, better businesses, better lives. I might have saw that. The yeah, so community. I think it was um, um, helping Kiwis uh, build better businesses and live better lives. Yeah, no, yeah. I the sound three like freedoms. a walking, That's what I'm saying, that? Yeah, that no. no, makes sense. <laughs> well, on that note, I'll make sure your LinkedIn's in there and also your website. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming. No, awesome. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Much appreciated. No dramas. <laughs>